First up, it's been just 72 hours since Mitt Romney announced his choice for running mate, and already, already, the Romney-Ryan ticket is getting flack from inside the Beltway Republican consultants and strategists. Politico says, and I quote, the GOP is fretting over Ryan. The Hill says Ryan links Romney with congressional Republicans, quote, an association that could carry more risk than reward. And oh, by the way, none of the Ryan critics are actually cited by name. Isn't that something? This whole thing is absolutely outrageous. Here, Romney selects one of the most talented Republican leader in years, and this is the response from Republican consultants? My message for these malcontents is very simple, and I tweeted it today. Man up and shut up. But let's see what our guests have to say, because I don't get it. David Goodfriend is back, former Clinton White House official. CNBC contributor Jim Pethokoukas of the American Enterprise Institute and Guy Benson, political editor of townhall.com. Now, fortunately, Jim Pethokoukas, you are not a Republican consultant, but what are these guys doing? <laughs> How stupid is it? You know, it is so clear that Ryan has totally energized the Republican story. Whether they win or not, he's energized it. What are these guys doing? Well, I don't know, maybe these, some of these are folks who worked for other candidates who Mitt Romney beat. I don't know. But see me, what's probably going on is they are operating from an old 50-year-old playbook. And that playbook is uh, Democrats take Medicare and they beat Republicans over the head with it. But I think the time has changed. One, in Paul Ryan, you have a guy who can talk about Medicare reform. It's obvious we need to do something. It wasn't always so obvious 20 years ago. We know we have to do something. And then you also have Barack Obama, who has thrown away this issue by cutting Medicare by nearly a trillion dollars. So the situation has changed, the landscape has changed, these consultants, they don't realize it. All right, is that true, David Goodfriend? The consultants don't understand it. The country, I think, is thirsting and hungering for an honest discussion of the entitlements, including Medicare, of overspending, of overborrowing, and of undergrowth. And that is what Ryan is doing, and these dopey, dopey Republican consultants, I guess they're not on the payroll. That's the best I can figure. Well, you know, usually we Democrats envy you Republicans for your discipline and falling in line. This is one instance where that's not the case, but I think if I speak for a lot of Democrats, the Paul Ryan pick enabled us to have a conversation just like what we're having now. What are we talking about? We're talking about Medicare. We're talking about entitlement reform. We're not talking about jobs. That's interesting. I'll tell you something. The Republicans who are expressing concern reflect, I think Jimmy's right, a kind of traditional view that when you bring somebody in who's touched that third rail, actually embraced that third rail of politics, you do invite controversy. I think it's good for the race. I think it actually helps differentiate these tickets. It helps tee up issues. But it's bad for the consultants. They ought to keep well, their yaps shut. I, I, I actually think... They really should keep their I, yaps shut. I actually think that consultants are overrated. You know yeah, what? Consultants are overrated. I think, I think, you know, unless you've put your own rear end on the line right. and you're actually out there fighting for votes, mm -hmm. any armchair philosopher can sit there and say... If you look at those crowds, I mean, come on. if you look at those crowds, this issue... No, this isn't the third rail where it's, where it's you know, electrified the, the ticket. It's In a good way, it's energized the ticket, just the opposite. Guy, uh, look, Ron, uh, Ryan was out there today in front of huge crowds talking about the poor economy and the need for economic growth. Ryan is a guy who's always been a Jack Kemp, Art Laffer, Kudlow, Sinair, supply cider. Right. He's for tax cuts and spending cuts and entitlement reform to grow the economy. I don't think David's right. I think growth is going to be a key issue. Right. I think Democrats are making two mistakes here. They're assuming, A, that Paul Ryan is a one-trick pony and he only talks about entitlement reform, which is not true. He talks about jobs in the economy. And with respect, I think we're going to be talking about jobs every Friday once a month as this election gets closer, we're not going to forget about jobs, and the American people aren't going to forget about jobs. The other thing that uh, I think Democrats aren't realizing, and they're maybe starting to have it sink in, is that the Republicans, the Romney-Ryan ticket, they are flipping the script on mm. Medicare, where they have a great attack ad out today saying, excuse me, Mr. President, you cut Medicare by right. $700 billion. That's the and, Achilles and pay, heel. And pay That's for the Obamacare. total Achilles well, heel. Absolutely. Now, hang they on a second. Away their club. I, yep. I want to I read some tweets, because fortunately, not everyone seems to agree with these goofy, unsatisfied, <laughs> unnamed GOP consultants. All right, so here's some tweets. We received an overwhelming response from people who think Romney is right on with Ryan. One viewer tweeted, right, Romney, Ryan, and company are just what the doctor ordered to cure the sickness known as Obamanomics. Another said, seven-term rep uh, re representative Ryan is more qualified than community organizer, both experience-wise and intelligence-wise. And here's another. 
Larry Kudlow at Paul Ryan. We'll focus on econ, taxes, and budget, three topics on which Obama cannot win. <laughs> these are all my personal tweets because I went nuts today when I read these stories. Um, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. You were going to make a point. Are they going to stay on? In other words, is it, not just Medicare, not just entitlements. There's a whole package of economic growth. Because if they don't, then David's right, and they're going to lose ground. Growth, 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 jobs, jobs, jobs. Well, you know, you know, it works both ways. To get out of the debt problem, we have to grow. We can't grow one right. and two, but we will never be able to get out of that hole. It's an impossibility. So we need to grow to get out of the debt. But the debt also has a jobs component, is that we're not going to grow in the future if we have this much bigger government. Bigger governments are a drag in economic growth and jobs. And then we're going to hear a lot more about tax reform, because Paul Ryan has a tax reform plan. Uh, Mitt Romney does it. We're going to hear a lot more about taxes, because that is definitely part of this uh, equation. See, David, I don't think there's anybody in the leadership of this country, in either party, who can talk about growth, taxes, spending restraint, and entitlement reform better than Paul Ryan. That's the thing. And I think putting him on the ticket, therefore, made enormous sense. Well, look, let's ask this question. What does a vice presidential candidate do for a ticket? I would argue that the ideal candidate helps to bring in additional votes that maybe the guy at the top of the ticket couldn't have gotten. And in this case, when you look at the numbers, Paul Ryan is not really helping bring in new voters. And in my opinion, this is something How that can you be sure? Uh, How the can polling you shows sure? it. If you look at the question Gallup has put, Romney up by two. Excuse me. The, the question posed was, will this vice presidential candidate convince you to vote for the ticket when you wouldn't have well, otherwise? And Rasmus, the answer is 14%. No, 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 that's Rasmus, very, very low. Yeah, but Rasmussen showed us polls. First of all, Ryan's popularity approval is up to 50% guy. And also 36% are now more inclined to vote for Romney well, as a result of Gallup Ryan. Gallup had it but much lower. The I know, get, they're split because it just started. But I'm just saying, there may be a trend here. The idea that Paul Ryan doesn't bring anything demographically to the ticket doesn't make sense. He's Midwestern, he's blue collar from a blue collar background, he's Catholic. I mean, there, there's definitely some demographics here that he brings into the fold. And there's a poll, again, Rasmussen out of Ohio, of the independents in Ohio, by a two to one margin, they say the Ryan pick makes them more likely to support Mitt well, Romney for president. I want to tell you something Can personally. I, personally. Go ahead. I, I'm from about 40 miles away from where Paul Ryan grew up. I'm from Madison, he's from Janesville. I used to run track him? meets. You're going to vote for him? <laughs> I used to run track meets. That sounds like a true confession. And we, we are ready. The universe uh, we are ready to, that is, that is, we're ready to embrace so, so I'm ready to you. Embrace and I, you and I were Madison. talking to him. You and I were talking to right. Paul Ryan right. in the rotunda of the Russell Building one night. Right. And you were asking him, do you think you'll run for that Senate seat? You remember this? I, when yeah. Herb Cole announced his I retirement, did. he said, no, I got news for you guys. I don't believe Paul Ryan could win the state of Wisconsin, we'll let alone Ryan. help his candidate He's bring like, in like more Sarah states. Sarah Palin plus Ross Perot. He brings he brings this sort of that those those two demographics. People are concerned about the debt, and he energizes Republicans. I don't I see it. I just don't see the it. The other point, guy. While Romney and Ryan are talking about issues and solutions, I don't hear a single thing except slander and slurs oh, well, Larry. from Obama and what Joe Biden said today. We're going to cover it again with Ann Coulter in a few minutes. I I don't hear anything from Team Obama. Nothing. Yeah. They have nothing to contribute. It's like the Republicans are having a very interesting conversation with themselves, and the whole country is joining the GOP right. as a result. That's why I think this could be a landslide. Well, you've got Romney and Ryan talking about jobs, growth, right. debt, and reform. You've got the Obama campaign just today talking about chains, cancer, uh, and dogs. Right. So I'm, let, let's talk I, about I, this priorities. Is just, this is just Paul, just him, but remember, Paul Ryan. We don't Iowa. have a plan. We just don't like you. That's exactly. We're going to end on that note. Thanks to our free marketeers, David Goodfriend, Jimmy P, and Guy Benson. Mm -hmm.